Good morning, chamos and chamas. Welcome back to another episode of Alvaro Dev Labs. In today's video, we're gonna check out something really cool that came out this week. I'm talking about Cypress and the new test runner for components, especially in React and Vue. So to give you a little bit of context, uh, Cypress team just released it this week 7.0.0 version, and this integrates a test runner for components inside. So Cypress normally is used for end-to-end -end testing and integration tests is really helpful because you can program your uh, test and you can see how the browser itself continue testing each one of the conditions that you put visually. Uh, it's just a headless uh, Chrome um, browser that runs everything that you need as it was a person. So for every manual testing that you need to do, it's really helpful for QA teams and developer teams to maintain the code. And do I, I really like it for a regression test, um, but the applications of the analysts, right? So the cool thing is now that you can use the same approach of Cypress, but with components itself. So you don't need to visit a page and create a standalone version of that page to test your components. You can test it as it was a unit test, but visually. So it's really cool, it's really awesome. I really congratulate the team um, behind it, uh, the Cypress team. Uh, really kudos for that. So, so let's get into it and let's start programming. Um, here we have the component that we're going to use. So I created with the view CLI a simple component. It's just a card with a cool image and some text like the title and I'm passing through a slot the content here um, for the power, right? So this is the interface of the test runner. Here we have a folder uh, structured where all our .spec files will uh, be. And then you have a second column where all the tasks or all the tests that you program into Cypress uh, will run. So in this case, for example, the first one that we are doing is um, renders a message. So we are checking if we pass as a prop a message uh, for the title, it will um, be the correct one, right? So it's expected that the H2 that is here has some text, that's okay. Uh, you, something real quick is that it, yeah, as well as an end-to-end -end testing, it takes some DOM snapshots, so you can check um, all of the steps here, um, how it's checking the, the code. Um, in terms of, of the project, I just basically create the VCLI project um, and to install this new feature, you need to add uh, Cypress, the latest version. Also add Cypress.view because before um, this was a, um, a separate um, plugin and now it's bundled into Cypress. So that, I, I, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's, it's how it is. And then you have this webpack that server um, in, inside Cypress also to be able to serve the component. Then you only need to run this command, then yarn Cypress open CT, and this will open the, the test runner, okay? In terms of the project, um, there is going to be a folder. Let me just put my glasses because I see shit. Um, you will have the Cypress folder, and inside of it, in plugins, you will need to copy and paste this part of the code that is in the blog post. What it does basically is that um, this is treated as a Cypress plugin. So you need to tell it uh, to Cypress that whenever um, it's running the command, uh, that server start, you start the server um, from here, from this package. And also you pass the web, uh, the web pack configuration that you need. In this case, we are going to use the same one as the view CLI, but you can create your own custom web pack config and pass it through. Then in the component, uh, we created an awesome card and along with the view component, we have here our .spec.ts. And what is cool is that it's just basically a mix of uh, unit testing with uh, Cypress. In one part, we have a similar method like a view test utils where you can mount the component um, pass the props uh, like these ones and also pass the slots like the default content and I'm declaring here 
And then you can use Cypress, uh, for example, to get the, the DOM component and uh, you can use the assertions between Cypress to test if it has the correct text. So that's really cool. What about if we continue testing and check on our property? So um, we're passing this content through um, the slots and it's rendering right away. If we go here, the cool thing is that you can treat this as any web page so you can uh, check the code here and the DOM. And if you see this content that I'm passing this text, it's not inside any tag, right? So I, w I want to put it in the P tag. Um, what I'm going to do is just import um, the random function uh, here from view, so H. And here where I put uh, default, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to create a DOM element well, P. I'm going to pass the content here. Okay, let's save it. We add a new line here. So now what should happen is that this is a P tag, right? How do I test this inside of Cypress? So in the spec here, um, I'm going, so it renders a title, right? Let's create another one. So each each one of the tests is between the it uh, keyword. So it renders um, a paragraph inside of the default slot. Okay. Um, so here we don't actually need to test the title but we are going to ask for the p tag and this one should have the content inside here so it should have text content let's save it and go again to our browser so it renders the title means that yes it's passing the title correctly and then it's passing um, we have a p tag with the expected test now let's create a more elaborated example. Uh, let's say your PO comes and say, hey, I need this really critical feature. I need you to add a button in the bottom of the, of the car. And when it's clicked, I want you to remove the title and change the color of the car, right? So to do that, let's just add a button here. Um, PG4, okay, so button. Um, uh, for those who are, you're, uh, that you're wondering, I'm using Tailwind here uh, just to prototype faster so I can do things like that, like PG1, this will add a padding X and a padding Y. Uh, let's add a background color of green, some text white, uh, text SM maybe, I'm rounded. And take me to see the magic. Okay, now we have the button. So we are going to add an event listener whenever you click it. Mm -hmm. And we are going to handle the click here. So we open a set of method here in the component and we want to change uh, certain things in the DOM with a variable. So I'm going to call it click it and it's going to be a reference a ref here. We have to add it and we need to return it. So return click it and we also want to create a function for handle click. So our function is going to be handle click. It doesn't have anything to pass on. And just going to change click it value uh, to true whenever we click it. So here, we paste it. Okay. So the idea will be to hide um, our title whenever we click. So we're going to show it whenever it's falsy. And we also want to add a class here. Um, so class uh, text, I'm going to choose the same color, so text screen 
400 whenever click it is true. So, you click it here like that. Okay. So let's quickly test it here manually. So it seems to be working. We are uh, uh, clicking the button and it's getting focused and the title is gone and we have the color uh, difference. So in order to test that um, with Cypress, let's go to the spec file and let's order this a little bit more. Um, as well as the end-to-end -end testing, you can create context here. I'm going to call this basic rendering. I'm just going to pass it here. And we are going to move this test inside that one. So, da -da, so until here, and we move it inside. That's good. And let's create another context for our new. So this will separate like in groups of uh, tests. So the second one is um, actions, for example. Okay. And then we create our first test and what it should do, right? So it should hide the title when button is clicked. Okay, so in order to do that, um, let's just mount the same gear. So, okay, and after we mount it, we want to click it. So, in order to do that, we are going to use um, the selection. And there are several ways. Uh, in this place, we can use button because we already know that it's a button. But um, a good practice normally is to add a data CI here and say, hey, this is, I don't know, um, um, car button. Right? And then here, instead of using this one, you use the selector for um, data. That is data ci equal to car button. Yes. And then here. Okay. So we select it and we click it. And then we put what we expect. So we expect that, um, let's get the title again. So the title was, well, the H2. So let's keep it like that. H2 should, no, it's pet, should not be visible. And also we expect that the paragraph get p so we can we can check the styles or we can check uh, where the class is so in to make it easier i'm just going to check that this class is being added to the car content uh, div so in the spec here we put car content should have class and we pass the class that we want to check so in this case it's text screen and let's see if it actually works so as you can see the contexts are different uh, so it creates like uh, subfolders for each one of the of, of the tests so basic render will have these two and then the actions so here it mounts the component it gets the the button here that we set the data to to be this one uh it click it and then we're gonna get the h2 and the assertion is, is suspected that is not visible which is true and also we are checking that the whole uh, car content has a class of text screen so what happens when it actually fails right so what what is going to be shown i'm going to change this one to uh, fail uh, on purpose uh, the test. 
So we're just going to do this one again, check it, and it's going to take like a timeout to see if it actually is failing. And here you will see in the interface that is going red and it gives you the assertion error. So it says, after a timeout, retrying after 400 milliseconds, this text is still uh, visible. So not visible, so it, it fails the, the test. Um, it's pretty plain explanatory, that's one of the things I like the most about Cypress, that you will understand what the issue is when the tails fail. Um, in this case, it's not visible because it has CSS property display none. So it, it actually explains you why it's failing, so that's pretty amazing. Of course, you will want to create more meaningful tests uh, than the ones that I show you today, because they were only to explain how Cypress works in a simple way. Um, but for that, uh, to do it in the real world, I suggest you to check out the Cypress documentation and in the guides and the API you will um, find the assertions. The assertions are uh, normally what goes after the command. So in this case the command is get and then you create an assertion. Um, they're based on, I think here it says on chai, so our BDD asser uh, assertions. What it does is it in um, like a more normal language, you will say, hey, should not have class. So every part of the sentence, every wording is with a dot and it's pretty explanatory what you want to test with it. Uh, here, for example, is uh, the one we use uh, to have or not have class. You can change, uh, you can check the, the length of a word. Uh, there are a lot of them, the visibility as we use, the existence, uh, to check the state of a radio button, for example, if it has the CSS, um, what else, disable property, in case you're using an input and you disable a button, you can check it with this. So there are a lot of assertions that you can choose from and I really recommend you to, to check the documentation, it's pretty explanatory. So that being said, that was all for today. Make sure you subscribe to get a new video every Monday. And also, if you want to check out the code that we did today, it's on the repo link in the description. Tell me in the comments what you want to see next, if you want to see more testing, if you want to see more view stuff, UX stuff, I'm in. So see you around. Bye.